we're gonna do a short video today on how to do some of the uh, smoked salmon that I like doing. Uh, it's a very popular recipe with the family. We like it a lot. And uh, I get a lot of questions about how I do it and, and what goes into it. It's very, very simple. So I thought I'd make a short video today on, on how to get it done. So um, what might surprise you is there are only one, two, three, four, five ingredients to this whole recipe. Five ingredients are black pepper white and brown sugar, and salt. Um, and of course, the salmon itself, that's a fifth and final ingredient. So that's it, just five ingredients. Um, and I'm gonna break those ingredients down real quick. So it is equal parts sugar and salt, okay? One part salt and one part sugar. So uh, some folks like to do just all brown sugar or all white sugar, I've tried it both ways. Um, I like the 50-50 brown and white, and just straight white table salt, nothing fancy. Um, so the ratios here are going to be about one cup of sugar, one cup of salt, and one tablespoon of pepper. So you multiply that by however many you have to, um, and you have a full recipe. This is about um, eight cups, eight cups, and eight tablespoons. So that's what we're working with today. All right, so some people want to know, well, how much sugar and how much salt per, you know, whole fillet of a fish, you know, half of a fish. And there is no real answer there. It just how much you're going to use. Um, sometimes I use a ton, sometimes I use a little bit. Uh, but we'll, this will get us through about two whole salmon, so four full fillets. Uh, so you could say, all right, four cups of dry ingredients on each side. So salmon. Uh, you'll see what I'm talking about when we get to brining the fish and, and putting our dry rub on there. There's about 10 pounds of fish in this case. So this, this eight cups of sugar, eight cups of salt, half of that sugar being brown, half of that sugar being white, and all that pepper will get us through about 10 pounds of fish. Obviously you at home, you may not do this much fish. You might only, only do about you know, three or four pounds at a time. Um, this is actually going to be for a big order uh, for the family and a family reunion and then some. So that's it. Now I've got my brine. Uh, next step is going to be to break out the fillets and decide how it is I want to lay these out and get them wrapped up. So I've tried this a few different ways. I've tried Ziploc bags, I've tried vacuum sealing, I've tried obviously saran wrap. Um, Overall, my favorite, most cost effective is the saran wrap method. This isn't going to be super perfect. Um, this will actually just provide us with um, enough wrapping to keep all the fish uh, contained and keep the brine on the fish while it sits overnight or however long you're going to brine it for. So I've got my saran wrap down. Now I'm going to add my brine. Um, I'm going to start with a just a small coat or a bed of brine for my first fillet. Uh, today we're using farm raised fresh uh, salmon. I've tried using wild and 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 fancy salmon, uh, but I found that the farm raised actually has a better fat content than the wild um, and that makes for tastier fish. So I'm going to lay this one down on top of the brine, skin side down. <clears throat> now I'm going to throw on some more brine. You want to be nice and liberal with your brine. You're not trying to skimp on it at all. You want to do this until you have every bit of the salmon covered. Alright, take my second fillet here. I'm gonna lay it down right on top. Meat side down right onto that brine. Now I'm gonna cover this up with some more. The skin side I found doesn't really absorb too much, uh, but you definitely want a good layer on there. It'll It'll penetrate the skin and kind of candy 
the meat just under the surface. I say candy. Uh, you'll see in a later later part of this video on what I mean by that that candying effect. I think out of the two cases that I have, I've got six fillets, total of uh, three salmon, full salmon, and I'm going to be able to use. Almost all that. I'm going to use all this brine and then I have to make a little bit more just to cover the last bit. Um, this isn't a super scientific way of me uh, measuring all the brine and all that, obviously. I just use enough to get the job done. Sometimes there's extra, sometimes there's not. If there's extra, then I'll just pile it on the last batch and call it good. Um, this last piece of saran wrap is going to help tie in maybe pieces of saran wrap will help kind of seal up the loose edges that I have here that are folded over each other. Um, Last to wrap up all this thing. Back to make some more brine. Make a mess, but that's okay. It's part of the fun. Loads of brine. Okay, here we go. We got a bed down. Beetle feet of salmon. Voila! Big as your face. <laughs> Again, I like to use uh, farm raised salmon because it has a beautiful fat content and it doesn't come out gamey. Um, you can really enjoy a lot of the salmon and it's not as dense um, in flavor. Not to say that's a bad thing, but it's not, it's not good eating salmon, I guess you could say. Good eating salmon is, is farm raised and has plenty of fat content. So you can really get in there and, and, and enjoy some of this mm -hmm. meal on its own. Uh, oh, yeah. Sockeye and, and what have you are good. It's great quality fish, don't get me wrong. Uh, but it's it's a lot like uh, it's almost like jerky. Like you don't eat so much beef jerky. I know somebody out there saying, no, I can eat I can eat beef jerky for days. Well, it, it gets a little bit much when it's that super lean, uh, gamey salmon. All right, so we are on salmon fillets number two, or round two, more of the brine, lots and lots of brine. After this, we have one and a half to go. Okay, as you can see, I kind of packed the salmon in between, or the brine between the, the fillets here, really coating it. We're going to use up all this brine for good reason. Ready to go. Another set of fillets. Brining away. Okay, so I did a little uh, super saran wrap there. Lots of saran wrap. Lots of saran wrap on this one. Uh, I'm actually going to go triple decker. Um, that's just a good proof that you can really do as many layers as you need to, as long as you can contain it. Yeah. Now you gotta wait. You gotta wait. I'm all dirty. I'm too dirty. Okay, I'll have to get to the mat. So I'm gonna go too high? No. Going three high on this one. As long as it's good and contained, I'll shut the door, you got an ample amount of brine covering all your fish, you're good to go. So you got 20 pounds of brine fish, well, brining fish, uh, ready to go. The edges here, I want to tuck everything into this box because it'll actually generate a lot of liquid while it brines, and I want that to ooze into this box, not my refrigerator. So, nighty night, we'll see you in about 18 hours. Okay, so we have brined our salmon. Um, it's gonna come out a little leathery. As you can see, it's, the sugar and salt is very, very wet. Um, I'm going to go ahead and rinse all the salmon that we have and I'm actually going to weigh it and I'm going to see what our 20 pounds of salmon turned into um, and just see how much water 
gets uh, got taken out. So here we go. Just over 20 pounds of salmon is now 18 pounds of salmon. So we've lost about 32 ounces of water, plus or minus the water that is sort of stuck and dripping off the fish right now. This is uh, now I'm going to start. I'm going to show you how to how I slice it for the the eaten salmon. Okay, this these are going to be your individual strips that somebody can have uh, as a main course basically in place of a, of a roasted or, or, or grilled salmon filet. So these are going to be your individual pieces. Uh, this end bit here is kind of misshapen, um, not perfect, but we uh, call that a scooby snack because it's not too big, it's not too small, just enough for somebody to enjoy. Alright, so these here I usually use about the width of the blade that I happen to be using. Um, and it gives us a nice piece of salmon that somebody can enjoy. Uh, you might say, well, that's not big enough for me. Well, my answer to that is when it's good and dense and smoky, um, this is plenty enough salmon for one person to enjoy in one sitting. And you could take this for lunch, you could have it for dinner, you know, some sides, and, and you'd be very happy with this. So, um, it is about... It's right at four ounces. So that's that's perfect. That's a perfect serving of salmon. Now, as I get to the smaller end of the, the, the fillet, the tail end of this fish, I might go a little bit wider to keep up that weight uh, for the individual where these two weigh about the same, but they're obviously a different shape. Um, I prefer, I personally prefer this part of the salmon as opposed to this guy. This is great, this is this is good and meaty, um, it's kind of mild. This right here absorbed a lot more of the brine and it's truly penetrated all the way down to the skin level, um, even even in this thicker piece here for sure. This is, this is gonna be a nice, deep, uh, tasty, smoked fish. Uh, these guys are gonna be perfect for um, maybe somebody who's trying this for the first time who enjoys more traditional cooked salmon. But when you are when you pull these out of the freezer for, for future eating, um, you can just identify them like that. You know that these are gonna be a little bit saltier, a little bit brinier, and these are gonna be your traditional uh, pieces that you see. Uh, your pretty stuff you see at the store. You don't see this smoked so much on the shelf. Um, I don't know why, it's, it's my favorite. Okay, so, here is my leaning tower of salmon, okay? We've got four uh, levels of salmon smoky goodness. This is the best way I've been able to figure out utilizing the area that I have inside my smoker. Um, you'll see the smoker here in a minute, but I guess the, the next step would maybe to get round grates instead of the uh, square or the rectangular. But the cookie, cool, cookie cooling racks um, are really my, my favorite choice, they're cheap. They're easy to find, and if I tear them up, I can replace them pretty easy. I've used uh, blocks here as uh, spacers in between each level. Uh, they're actually scrap 2x4. Uh, you might ask yourself, well, hey, you're using treated lumber in your smoker that's bad. It'll, it'll, it'll smoke up and, and poison you and all that stuff. I'm not going to get it that hot in the smoker. It's not going to smolder. As you can see, these are... These are blocks that I used in previous smokes before, um, and nobody's died. So, <laughs> uh, really though, just use your blocks, use your brain. Um, don't smoke with treated wood, but I got no problem using it here. Uh, again, as a disclaimer, this is not a uh, this is not a official cooking program. This is just what I do. I'm sharing it. I'm not giving anyone instructions. Uh, on something they should do at home, uh, safe food handling practices and whatnot. 
This is just a demo of what I do and how I do it. So there you go. Anyway, uh, let's. Uh, these have been sitting for a little over an hour and the smoker's ready to go. So let's get them out there and give this thing a try. Okay guys, so I've got my uh, Weber Smoky Mountain ready to go. Um, I've got my base with my charcoal ring. I've got a combination of leftover uh, chunk charcoal and some of these briquettes. I've pre-staged my smoking wood. I use hickory. Um, sometimes I use apple, but in this case I'm using just straight hickory. I've got that ready to go. I'm about to dump my coals on top of this, uh, this ring. Uh, this will this will burn all the way across and give me a nice long uh, session of of smoking. Give me plenty enough time to get all my salmon smoked today. This is my center section of my Weber Smoky Mountain. Um, it contains a water pan, which will act as a heat sink to keep the temperature decent, uh, just above 200 degrees probably, uh, or about 260. Um, 270 max. I'll keep that going with a thermometer. But right now I'm going to add some water and that'll act as a heat sink. I'm going to carefully do this so I don't splash water all over my charcoal. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and fill my water pan. Even if I do splash, it'll go around and it won't even touch the coals. So, there we go. Time to add the fish. Okay, so I've got my tower of salmon. Gonna place it in the center here. And with my dome lid, I can make good use of that tower. There we go. Set it and forget it, right? Is that how it works? Now, this will smoke uh, two to three hours. I'm gonna go grab my probe thermometer and I'm gonna stick one of my thicker pieces of salmon and maintain uh, a probe also in the upper chamber here so I can maintain a nice 270, 260 uh, degree smoke. Um, temperature will vary uh, depending on what type of charcoal you're using. How you, how you use your ventilation, both bottom and top, how many times you open this up. Um, so just have to keep an eye on it and make those small tunes and small adjustments. Uh, don't trust this guy right here, it'll lie to you all day long. But let's grab that thermometer. Okay, so I'm gonna use my innovation thermometer. Thank you, Aunt Renee. Um, this, this thermometer is used for the internal temperature of the smoker itself. And this probe thermometer, you just want to stick it right in the middle, thickest section of uh, whatever you intend on smoking. I'll probably use this guy right here. So. And this will act as a remote. Uh, I can view this wirelessly while I drink beer inside and uh, check out how my food and how my smoker's doing. As you can see, the temperature is already uh, coming up. My salmon temperature is going down because it's been sitting in a nice cool room. Uh, not quite that 39 degrees, 38 degrees that we saw in the refrigerator. It's coming up there already. The smoker is already showing 127. I'll get it go. Um, this will probably level out about 52 degrees. Um, and this will see climb here in the next 20 minutes. Uh, and we'll see initial spike in temperature on the smoker and then it'll calm down. Um, as long as this doesn't get above 300, I usually don't get worried. Um, but we'll see how we go. And uh, let's check in on the salmon 
in about an hour. See you then. Okay guys, so here's what you get as a result. Nice, smoky, smoky, smoky fish. I left it on there until the thickest part reached just shy of 165 degrees. Now it's time to remove it from the rack. And I like to put it on a nice big tray covered in some parchment paper and to the freezer where I'll pre-freeze it before I vacuum seal it. Okay, time for round two. These are the big guys. Some of the bigger pieces here. Okay, let's get to it. Okay, here we are. Uh, we've got about 265 degrees inside the smoker and about 166 degrees in the salmon. So I call that about right and we're gonna pull it out. tricky but time to go inside guys uh, that's that's how you do the salmon okay you get good fish you fry it you let it sit for a day or so you smoke those babies you seal them up tight for later use um, we will probably add more videos about maybe what you can do with this fish uh, like make the broth or some good pho that soup and uh, more to come. So if you like this video and uh, maybe you learned something from this process, be sure to give us a like, a thumbs up, and uh, subscribe to our channel for more to follow. See you guys next time.